Hello and welcome to Thought Provoking Tech. I'm Zach and in today's video, I'm gonna be uh, showcasing the my benchmarks for Star Wars Battlefront and kind of discussing the performance of cloud gaming uh, with uh, Battlefront. So in this video, I'm testing both Liquid Sky and comparing that against Parsec plus Paper Space uh, to get a good picture of who comes out on top of uh, on this battle. So let's go ahead and jump right to the benchmarks and start discussing kind of the performance in Battlefront. All right, so for this segment of the video, I wanted to talk about the general performance benchmarks of Star Wars Battlefront. So to get things started, uh, I went ahead and played three playthroughs of the online multiplayer for each different hardware tier. Uh, that's because some of the maps seem to be a little bit more demanding than others. For example, the indoor moon map, it seems like it uh, is a little more demanding um, and it seemed like the FPS kind of backed off on that. That's why I ran through three complete tests uh, and three complete rounds so that I had the most thorough and uh, complete testing for this uh, video. Uh, beyond that, I am playing on the ultra setting for all these tests. I did not turn it down at all. Um, so all this, it's not like a custom thing. It's just ultra. So if you choose the preset ultra, uh, that is what I tested on uh, for this uh, gameplay demo, which is pretty much the highest settings you can turn on Battlefront. I believe AA has one setting higher than the preset ultra for some reason uh, that you can kick it up one notch, but I did not do that for this test. Uh, all in all, the game looked great, played great on pretty much all the solutions, except for the gamer plan seemed to have some pretty hard dips uh, throughout the play, which we'll see later on when we look at the complete FPS chart from one of the matches, uh, which isn't the best general uh, match, but I just felt like I wanted to do just a one match FPS performance, just so you can kind of see that, because it is pretty average, there just is a little bit of fluctuation from um, map to map, just so I wanted to do this with a little bit of uh, average, so we got a little bit better ideal. Uh, so outside of the minimum on the gamer side, uh, the minimums everywhere else seemed pretty good. Uh, the GPU Plus did dip quite a bit heavier than the P5000 as well as Liquid Sky Pro. Uh, pretty interesting tidbit here is even though uh, the P5000 is a little bit higher in hardware for sure, uh, than what the Sky Pro has, uh, it did end up actually having a little bit lower of a low than the Pro did, so it dips a little bit lower. Uh, now moving on to maximums, you can see that the P5000 is way up there, um, but you can see that the Liquid Sky Gamer or and the Pro in addition both cap out at 68. I think that is because they limit the actual FPS um, that the machine can actually render even on the server side. Uh, to 68 for some reason. Most of the time it actually stops at 67, uh, but sometimes it gets up to 68 for some reason. I don't know exactly why they do that. I don't know if that's a one user can't push the system hard, hard and possibly negatively impact other users possibly, um, but that is uh, something I had noticed uh, with their GPUs, and they are using the grid uh, GPU, so they could be designed because they're kind of designed for um, multi-user like gaming or cloud gaming and th uh, things like that. So that could just be how grid kind of works itself. Um, I don't know why Liquid Sky has an option to stream uh, to turn your FPS from. You they have thirty an option of thirty FPS, sixty FPS, and unlimited, and what it's actually streamed to you. Uh, since it's capped at 68, I don't know why they have the unlimited option because eight, eight FPS isn't going to matter much when. Um, you know, you're, you could have been streaming at 60 FPS. Um, so I don't know why they really have that option unless they are planning in the future to ha actually, uh, you know, remove that cap or move it higher for people with monitors with higher refresh rates. Um, because of the way that Liquid Sky encodes and decodes your video, Fraps does not want to pick it up locally. So I did not do local tests for these uh, games. However, I can uh, say that at least on the par pa Parsec and paper space side, that the local was pretty identical to what I got in the cloud um, without any uh, changing of the settings really required. Now let's go ahead and move on to our average. And you can see that uh, the Liquid Sky Gamer and the GPU Plus are pretty much neck and neck, which is a little bit in, uh, interesting uh, simply because we see on, over here on the Gamer has a lot lower on the, the lower dips on when it does hit the, those dips. But all in all, overall, it actually ends up beating out the GPU Plus. So even though that it seems to have a more wider fluctuations uh, due to some um, limit, whether that is the VRAM or the CPU, 
Um, it doesn't seem like it's a CPU clock frequency because the Liquid Sky Pro does very well. So it must be either a number of CPU cores or the VRAM itself is having uh, problems making it hit, hit that dip. But all in all, it still does perform very well. And that's because it is, uh, I guess, more consistent. Whereas your uh, Paper State GPU Plus plan has a lot more fluctuation in its performance. And then moving on there, you can see that the P5000 does edge it out. Um, but I do think that the Pro, since it was so steady, I think if it wasn't frame limited, that it might be up there with the P5000 or possibly even above for this game for the average um, FPS. Right, so moving on to the complete FPS benchmark chart. Uh, this is only from a single playthrough, so it's not the best data I could possibly get, but it is. I just wanted to take some general takeaways from this uh, data and, and what the, these benchmarks kind of show. So you can see here that each hardware package is, had very different reactions to uh, Battlefront, and these kind of showed in the averages and, and so on and so forth on the minimum and maximums that we saw earlier. But actually looking at the chart as the game kind of progressed, it's a, you can take some pretty interesting takeaways from this data. First of all, on the Liquid Sky Pro, you can see the biggest thing that I can say that's a big benefit to it is that it is very consistent, very, very consistent throughout its playthrough. There are a couple dips that, uh, the worst of which ended up in, in the mid 50s, but for the most part, a very consistent 65 to 67 FPS on average. Uh, roughly in that range, it does you know alternate between like that one to two FPS range that it does, um, but very, overall very consistent. Only a couple little dips uh, at two different spots where it did you know dip below kind of the average and did dip dip slightly below 60 FPS for a very short period of time. Moving on to the P5000, you can see it is a it does end up having much higher uh, peaks uh, because it isn't limited uh, like Liquid Sky does. And its minimums aren't quite as bad as uh, the Liquid Sky system, but it is a lot more inconsistent as you can see here. Your simply your range of your FPS, even from you know one moment that, and then a moment not too much later, the, the highs and the lows have a lot of fluctuation. Uh, simply because it is still staying above 60 FPS at pretty much all times, maybe a couple dips in the very high 50s uh, occasionally. It is still a great experience, but there is a lot less consistency in the uh, P5000 from Paperspace. And also the cost between the Liquid Sky Pro and the P Paperspace P5000 is quite a bit higher, but I'll get to that in, 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 at the end when I kind of talk about who I think is the best option at this point in time. Now moving on to the Paperspace GPU Plus, uh, you can see that it kind of shares what its big brother has in inconsistency. Uh, you know, pretty inconsistent results. Um, a little bit more consistent though, it doesn't have the huge highs, it, the drops between its highs and the lows aren't near as bad. And all in all, a pretty good experience, but we see that it does have a lot of times where it does fall quite a bit below 60, and with a lot of times where it's averaging around 50 uh, FPS rather than 60 FPS, but it does seem to dodge or revolve around between anywhere from 50 uh, to about 64 FPS for the most part is where it kind of lives. So all in all, enough for a good experience, but not the best experience you could get uh, from cloud gaming, but not nothing that's gonna have drops that are uh, bad enough to negatively impact your gameplay experience in my opinion. Now saving the most interesting for last is the Liquid Sky Gamer. Uh, at times it performed pretty much pretty similar to what the GPU Plus plan did uh, from paper space, but at times they had very bad drops. Um, since I don't have, didn't have Afterburner installed at the time and didn't have testing on the GPU usage, the VRAM usage, the CPU usage, and so on and so forth, I don't know exactly what caused these big drops, but all in all, the gamer plan isn't something I would really recommend, at least playing on Ultra. Of course, you can knock these settings down quite a bit and you could probably get a better, uh, more consistent um, experience, based on uh, just playing around with those settings and getting something that's more optimal for your you know, play style, as well as kind of what kind of visual fidelity uh, look you're, you're looking for. But at least on Ultra, we see that it is not really something that I would recommend playing on just because of the dips. You do see dips, uh, you know, right at the 30 mark, you see less than 30 FPS at least five times. Uh, that one might be right at, right at 30, so you see yeah, about 
maybe six times uh, where it dips below 30 and a couple times where it dips. And this time right here, it dipped down to zero for a, quite a while uh, before it rebounded up. It kind of hung there for a while. And you see a couple times it does drop to zero or near zero, uh, which does not make a great experience. Of course, once again, I did say you can drop those settings down a little bit and get a little bit better experience. But I just wanted to have a consistent testing amongst these systems. And you can see that the Liquid Sky Pro plan does very well. So I didn't want to turn the settings down uh, just for one game that is having a little bit of, or one of the options that is having a little bit of issue of running it. Moving on to kind of price performance, I'm bringing back my pricing chart from my earlier video when I talked about pricing in cloud gaming and going to be talking about the kind of the price to performance of the different options out there. Uh, simply because the gamer option did not uh, perform very well and since Liquid Sky makes it so easy to jump between the gamer uh, hardware tier and the pro hardware tier, I'm not really going to be talking about Liquid Sky Gamer in this in this part of this video. While you can probably turn the settings down and get a better experience, uh, simply because Liquid Sky does make it so darn simple to switch between Gamer to Pro, uh, something that Paperspace uh, and Parsec don't really have an option that is near simple. Paperspace does have an option to switch your hardware tier, but it, for one, it takes a lot more time and I haven't always had uh, great success with it. Uh, because they do use different hardware on the GPU side, I can see why they have issues with that. But since Liquid Sky essentially uses the same base and just gives you more allocation to that base hardware, they can very easily uh, swap your hardware pro profiles. And with that knowledge, I just recommend just playing on Liquid Sky Pro. Now, moving on to Paperspace and Parsec, the option is a little bit more complicated. Uh, my recommendation, honestly, is to go with the Paperspace GPU Plus option. But instead of playing on Ultra, I recommend taking it down one notch to high. And I did a playthrough that I'm going to upload to my vlog channel uh, where I played on high and had a very good experience that is comparable to the Liquid Sky Pro experience. Uh, but it's just not quite as consistent. You drop below 60 FPS on a more regular basis than what the Liquid Sky Pro does. But all in all, a very good experience uh, just requires setting the graphical uh, options down one. Um, now, you might ask why I didn't do that with Liquid Sky Gamer since I did that with the paper space. But uh, the reason I did that is just because the gamer plan had were options where it dipped very low uh, and on a somewhat regular basis where it has those huge dips. And I don't think it's going to be quite as easy as a fix as the GPU Plus plan did where it was just dipping below 60 uh, and it wasn't dipping near as low. Uh, and the high and the difference between its highs and lows weren't near as drastic as the gamer plan was from Liquid Sky. And I didn't include those in the earlier benchmarks simply because I wanted to have those benchmarks be on an even playing field between the different hardware profiles. So my paper space option is the GPU Plus plan, and my Liquid Sky plan, a uh, best option, the best price of performance is the Liquid Sky Pro. For this episode of Cloud Gaming Head to Head playing Star Wars Battlefront, I give the win to Liquid Sky Pro overall. Uh, a large part of my reason for choosing Liquid Sky Pro as the overall winner is because of the consistency that I got when testing it. It is very, very consistent and very seldomly does it actually dip below you know, 60 FPS at all. Uh, there are only a couple instances in uh, the full complete FPS chart that I even had dips below um, 60 FPS and because of that consistency, I think it is the best option. I did turn the paper space GPU plus option down one step on the graphic side and had a, a experience that was comparable in the average FPS, but it still didn't have near the consistency, uh, which is why I went with the liquid sky, uh, pro option because of that consistency, you're going to have a very solid, uh, play play through experience on, uh, battlefront. Now, the P5000 also has a very, very solid uh, play experience, but since it is so much more expensive than the other options out there, pretty much always being the most expensive option at any playthrough amount, except for maybe some random ones right after the Liquid Sky has the big jump because they sell their pricing in bundles, that the P5000 might be cheaper for you know a certain uh, monthly uh, period of uh, you know hours. You know, all in all, it is the most expensive option, and you don't gain a ton over the GPU Plus if your end goal is getting a 1080p 60fps stream. So, all in all, Liquid Sky Pro gets the win. Uh, trailing not too far behind is Paperspace and Parsec with the GPU Plus option. 
Uh, behind that would be the liquid or the paper space uh, P5000, uh, and then quite a bit at the bottom you have the Liquid Sky Gamer, simply because of the dr drastic inconsistencies in its performance, uh, possibly due to the limited VRAM or possibly due to the limited number of CPU cores. I don't really know at this point in time. And while you can turn those settings down and probably get a much better experience, simply because those settings were so drastic uh, and with possible limitations of the hardware itself coming into play, I do place it in fourth place. So that's pretty much it for today's video, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. Hopefully this helped you choose uh, give you a little bit more insight into the uh, dilemma of choosing the best cloud gaming uh, platform out there. Honestly, these tests have been so neck to neck uh, and with you know certain options getting the win from time to time that it is a very hard decision and I will probably for quite some time continue to have subscriptions to both Paperspace and uh, use Parsec to stream that and do Liquid Sky simply because for one I do enjoy testing and I do believe cloud gaming is the future but also just as a you know person that does do cloud gaming from time to time for fun and not just for you know the experience of doing the YouTube videos uh, there are times where one is better than the other and since they're so neck to neck there isn't a clear-cut winner at this point in time and that's why these videos i think are you know so great because you kind of find uh, a series of games maybe in these this how to head series that fit what you play and use those to decide which is the best option for you because not everyone is going to want to just subscribe to multiple uh, game streaming services so with that in mind hopefully this was beneficial hopefully you enjoyed it uh I will probably you know, include some uh, snapshots of some gameplay uh, that I'm going to include on my vlog channel. Uh, there is also going to be a link to that in the description below, so check that out and subscribe to that for full gameplay. I played through the GPU Plus plan on uh, high settings, and I played through the Liquid Sky Pro option on Ultra for that video. Um, and you can see the FPS counter for the server in that video too if, if you're interested in watching kind of a long playthrough keep in mind though i suck at battlefront so just a warning up front uh all in all i hope you liked this video if you did give it a big like i greatly appreciate that and also leave a comment in the description or in the comments below uh i'm interested in talking and hearing your impact or your feedback on this video or anything you want to talk about in relation to cloud gaming or anything else that i make videos on even uh, also, if you're not already an existing subscriber, hit that subscribe button and also click that little bell icon right next to it so that you'll be notified when I release new videos. And all in all, check out the links that rotate in the banner uh, throughout this video for different ways to chat with me. Uh, the Discord is a growing community right now. I hope to make it kind of like a forum type thing where you can talk about a lot of different topics uh, and make a nice little community there. It's a great application uh, and it's, it, you can have like all your gaming uh, friends as well as a lot of different YouTube communities I see uh, for example Adafruit uh, which is a place I buy a lot of my electronic components for different electronic projects I do uh, they're on there now so a lot of different communities are starting to get on discord which is very cool so to also check that out too uh, it's a very cool place to chat uh, and that's it for this video guys so until next time Zach out